Okay, so a pleasant day to each and everyone. So I'm here to um, present about school and education issues in Philipp Philippine context. So there are important issues that must be resolved in our um, Philippine education system. So it is composed of these four. So the first one is um, uh, we have the quality of education, uh, which will be discussed later you know, after I presented these four issues, followed by affordability of uh, education. Next is a government budget for education. And the last one is education mismatch. So for the first issue, which is about the quality of education, there is a decline in the quality of Philippine education at the elementary and secondary levels. So I'll just take uh, the, the first two you know, of the basis for this. So the results of national achievement test among elementary and high school students and in CAE were way below the target mean score. And in 2004, high school readiness test is only 0.64%, scored 75% or better or 8,000 students out of 1.2 million examinees passed. So another thing is the self-assessment test for English. It's only 19%, scored 75% or better or 10,000 out of 51,000 teachers. And then the decline in quality of the education in Philippines, um, there are trends in international mathematics and science study as of 2003. So math, Philippines rank number 43. Um, science, Philippines rank number 42. On the other hand, in Southeast Asia, Singapore is number one and Taipei for number two. Next issue is on affordability of education. Big disparity in educational achievements across social groups. Reality check. Socioeconomically disadvantaged students have higher dropout rates in elementary level. And then most of the freshman students at the tertiary level come from relatively well-off families. And that is a very self-explanatory in a way. So I, um, I think we observe this in our experiences at our universities or in the different schools. Next is the budget for education. The Philippine constitution has mandated the government to allocate the highest proportion of its budget to education. However, Philippines still has one of the lowest budget allocations to education among the ASEAN countries. Then the last one, the last issue is on mismatch that there is a large proportion of mismatch between training and the actual jobs. This is the major problem at the tertiary level, and it is also the cause of existence of a large group of educated, unemployed, or underemployed. It is really true because there are, especially here in the Philippine uh, context, we prepare to take, uh, we prefer to take courses that are mostly white collar jobs after graduating and then it is for a fact that the demand uh, the demands for those jobs are very low but still uh, our students in the philippines still go or still chose that um courses because of its um of its status and instead of taking up agriculture and other sciences which is which can really help in the development of the country are very low in comparison with other uh, courses. So next, these are, I think, is the main focus of the school issues and education, uh, the main focus of school and issues in education, specifically in the Philippine educational system. So I may point out one by one, which will be discussed um, individually later on. So the first one is historiography followed by internationalization, followed by emasculation, followed by fly-by-night, cultural insensitive abandonment, substandard textbooks, 
contractualization, specialization, cap, uh, copy-pasting culture, McDonaldized, non-sustainability, poor liberal art, purveyor of myth, marginalization, monolithic education, and boring teachers. So the first one is the colonial historiography. So giving heavier premium to the history of the colonizers in the Philippines and not to the history of the Filipinos. In fact, in our history subjects, uh, history starts when the Spaniards came into the Philippines. And nobody, or in any history books, nobody tells a lot about the pre-colonial or the pre-Hispanic people, which just uh, came about later on. And I think that is one of the reasons uh, why we still get stuck in this, what we call colonial histori historiography. And in fact, in all of the history books, uh, all the story of Filipinos started when the, Spanish, the Spaniards came, then the Americans came, and then the Japanese, and then eventually we get our independence. But if we try to look it deeper, we realize that we really have a, a very solid uh, foundation of our culture as being as Filipinos. Next is internalization of the division of labor. To be skillful in arithmetic and computer literacy, fluent in foreign languages, specifically English, and docile in order to serve as workers of the transnational businesses of the advanced capitalist countries. Yes, in the case of call center agents or the BPO industry, um, we have a lot of graduates uh, graduating from different courses. But sad to say, because of the demand, uh, they, they, they chose to become call center agents. So in a way, um, there's a, what we call, um, instead of uh, having these people work for the economy, they are uh, hired by these uh, Western countries so that they can become more richer in their own countries. And another thing is emasculation and demoralization of teachers. So victimized by the over, overwork and underpaid policy of the system of the past leads to the emasculation and demoralization of ranks. Uh, explains why the teaching profession is not attracting the best of the brightest from the crop of the students. Yes, uh, it is true, but at least right now, because of the demand of the K-12 program, uh, teaching right now has become uh, improving in its status in society. Uh, teachers, more often than not, are victimized by overwork and underpaid policy of the system of the past and the present dispensations. So this is true because um, just like what we have in our online or the distance learning in the secondary or in the elementary and the secondary and the deaf ed, the teachers are very busy in making or printing out their modules. In fact, just staying at school just to just to finish the task. Next is the fly-by-night educational institutions. The proliferation of fly-by-night educational institutions is counterproductive. It produces a pool of half-baked, unprepared, and incompetent graduates. Yes, it's true here in the Philippines. Uh, there are a lot of uh, private institutions, and then. Uh, later on, if uh, they cannot sustain it, they will, you know, uh, their, their faculties are not that, um, uh, have that skills. So, you know, the problem is uh, like that. Next is the culturally and in gender insensitive educational system. Women, the common tao and the indigenous people are almost historically excluded from the Philippine historiography in favor of men and heroes from Luzon and the power elite. Next is the state of abandonment of education. The state in an incremental fashion is abandoning its role to subsidize public education, particularly in the tertiary level. This comes in the form of matriculation, laboratory, and miscellaneous fee increase in order to force state colleges and universities to generate their own sources of fund. Next, substandard textbooks. Some textbooks which are already circulating are both poorly written and absurdly edited. It is true, there are a lot of memes coming up from Facebook 
taken from these different textbooks in elementary. And there are a lot of not only that is poorly written, but even the questions are uh, somewhat uh, not um, appropriate for the for the age of the students. Then next is widespread contractualization. In the name of profit, owners and administrators of several private institutions commonly practice contractualization among their faculty members. Yes, they are just like part-time teachers. So uh, if you are part-time teachers, you cannot get the benefit of being a regular uh, teacher. So that's one of the ways that they can save money for their institution. And then and due disregard for specialization. Some colleges and universities even for high school, encourage their faculty to be generalist in order to be able to handle various subjects all at once. So this is true in the secondary in the Department of Education, in which a biology major a graduate teacher will handle um, Filipino music subjects because of what, we, what they call um, spiralization. Next is the copy-pasting culture, over-dependence to the cyberspace has dramatically reduced the capability of students, even teachers, to undertake research. So based on my personal experience, especially under the online um, learning of what we have right now, I really noticed that the output of the students are just copy-pasted from Google Scholar and other sources. And I find them that most of their outputs are plagiarized. And that is the problem now because um, these students are find, uh, finding it convenient and they, they thought that if you just copy and paste, the teacher will not know that they just get it from, from a certain source. So next is the McDonaldized education. So the system, methodology, and even the content of education in the Philippines are mere haphazard transplantation from the West. Yes, this is true. Most of our textbooks on different majors on different subjects all came from the West. There are only <clears throat> a few uh, Filipino teachers or Filipino authors who made textbooks that is really focused in the Philippines. So that's one of the reasons. That's why we call it McDonaldized education. It is therefore Eurocentric, culturally insensitive, and non-reflective of the local milieu or the local environment. Yes, this is true especially in the subjects of uh, like business management, a lot of all these things that they anchored with our, met our, our framework or theoretical framework or methods from the West. And um, it's, it's not so many um, Filipino authors who really came about their own and then they use it as a structure for, for our education. Next is the problem of non-sustainability and non-continuity. Teachers, administrators, and publishers are all left in limbo whenever the DepEd would come up with another totally different directive from what it used to have in a rather very southern interval. The best example for this is what is happening right now. Though we know that we are still uh, unprepared for going into online learning, but still the Department of Education um, instill that we really have to start now so the teachers yeah. try their best in order to procure bond papers printers and other materials just to produce all these modules and it's really uh, hard because not all students or their parents have the ability to you know get these modules or help the students answer this these uh, modules and so uh, I, I think the, the the challenge right now is it's not about who is the most intelligent student, but who has the most intelligent parents. So I think that is the best example for this one. And I know that um, there are a lot of issues about non-sustainability and non-continuity of the said program. Next, the poor regard for liberal art or education. Liberal education is intended to form a holistic individual equipped with communication, critical thinking, mathematical creative, interpersonal and interpersonal skills. That's why we have philosophy, languages, humanities, not sci, social science, and other things, not only for our major subjects, because 
uh, equally alarming ko no, is the lack of enthusiasm and motivation exhibited by some professors who handle the subject, especially they believe that it has nothing to do with the course or area of specialization of their students. Yes, in fact, there are a lot of this. Even students would say, why do we have to take philosophy one? Why do we have to take this natural science? The social sciences about politics, about um, uh, the Philippine constitution, without realizing that those things are very vital in order to attain that holistic, you know, holistic knowledge, holistic um, skills and attitude that really brings out the best in each individual. The next is the education as a purveyor of myth. Education has been very effective in mainstreaming and perpetuating the social myths in a subtle and indirect manner. Some of these myths are perceived superiority of the white educated man official history as advanced by the Western point of view. Globalization is the only way to achieve economic development and stereotypes against the minoritized and the disenfranchised. Next is the further marginalization. In the name of profit and as a response to the dictates of the market forces, colleges and universities prefer to offer more courses in line with the health sciences like nursing, medical transcription, and caregiving. Why? Because of the demand. So because there is, uh, they said that um, it is needed in other countries and everybody just following the bandwagon effect. So the institution, instead of focusing on the things that can, uh, relevant courses, no, uh, they, 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 they choose to offer this one because of the demand. Next is the monolithic education. Some educators in the name of conservatism and for the sake of convenience prefer the old style teaching paradigm where they view themselves as the fountain of knowledge and their students as nothing but empty vessels to be filled up. So at this, at this time, because of the blended learning, realize that we are not only the source of information, but the internet has become one of the major source of information for our students. So gone are the days that um, we are the ones who have all the information. And the last one is the atrociously boring teachers. There are no boring subjects, only boring teachers. But at least we should recognize them because they still serve a purpose. They serve as bad examples. Yes, because some of the teachers, um, especially they didn't undergo like uh, the professional education courses. So it's really different for those uh, teachers who underwent uh, background in uh, educational psychology, in marking and uh, standardized measurements. So those are the very basic things that a teacher should really have to incorporate in his arsenal. And next is the tertiary education, the lack of research in uh, high, uh, higher education institutions is also seen as another factor in the low quality of tertiary education in the Philippines. That's why um, the state, the SOCs are doing their best not to encourage uh, the, the, the faculty to do research, no? have these different scholarships provided for them and providing them with incentives in order for them to, 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 to conduct research. So in 2010, the share of debit budget, the total education expenses was 85.7%, up from 81% in 1998. So there was uh, really an increase in the educational budget. So the people-teacher ratio, the higher... The high population growth in the country is also another factor in the high percentage of high pupil ratio. Another reason is the failure to adequately implement the teacher diplomas deployment policy. Then teachers report that boys are difficult to discipline, have a hard time stealing still, do not participate in class, and unable to focus on written tasks as assignments and exams. Then the government has imposed a moratorium on the establishment of the SUCs. The rationalizations of the higher education system will also reduce the number of the applicative programs. Then the scholarship system in the Philippines. The scholarship system in the Philippines is problematic as the country's student assistance efforts date are meager and fragmented. And some reforms proposed, so based on the social education, uh, school and education issues in Philippine context, these are the things that I uh, uh, propose no, as reform. So the first one is the upgrade of the teacher's salary scale. The next, teachers have been underpaid. There is very little incentive for most of them to take up advanced trainings. 
amend the current system of budgeting for education across regions, just based on participation rates and unit costs. This clearly favors the more developed regions. Stop the current practice of subsidizing state universities and colleges to enhance access. This may not be the best way to promote equity, but an expanded scholarship program, giving more focus and priority to the poor may be more equitable. Get all the leaders in business and industry to become actively involved in higher education. This is aimed at addressing the mismatch problem. Develop or rationalize apprenticeship program with heavy inputs from private sector. Transfer the control of technical training to industry groups, which are more attuned to the needs of business in the industry. So that ends my presentation and these are my sources. So thank you very much. And get this.